happy to be here with you today. It, practicing duets is way fun. We just had so much fun preparing this. But each individual performer will be introducing themselves and their songs. So without further ado, we'll have our first performer. Good afternoon. My name is Avery Salisbury. I'm from Reading. And today, my teacher, Ms. Belisle, and I will be playing a duet of Skip to My Lou. Skip to My Lou is a partner stealing dance from the 1840s. It begins with couples skipping hand in hand in a circle. A boy in the middle sings, Lost my partner, what'll I do? He grabs the hand of a girl, and that boy goes to the center. Another verse is, I'll get another one sweeter than you. Lou is a Scottish word for love. My name is Rebecca Banks, and I'm from Woodstock. I'm going to play Main Street Rag by Carol Metz. Mrs. Belial asked me, what is Main Street? I told her that's our Central Street. Then she asked me, what is, what's the activity like on Central Street? And I told her people are busy shopping, especially at my parents' bakery. <laughs> I'm from White River Junction, and Gwen and I are playing one of the dances from Alexander Borodin's Prince Igor, which was an opera. At the beginning of this opera, um, there's a scene where there's a full solar eclipse, which foreshadows his defeat in, the, in a battle. Um, this dance that we're playing actually comes from the end of Act Two. It's a, actually called gliding, The Gliding Maidens in which they compare love to a flower that droops in the heat of the day but is revived at night. 
Um, you may recognize this tune as another song that was um, written for the musical Kismet. I'm Gwen from Windsor, and next we're going to be playing Berkuse by Gabriel Fauré. Um, Fauré was born in the south of France, but soon moved to Paris once his talent was discovered. In 1849, his father began working at a teacher training college. There was a chapel attached to the school, which Fauré recalled in the later years of his life, saying, every time I could get away, I ran there. I played atrociously, no method at all, quite without technique, but I do remember that I was happy. He soon moved to the South, uh, the School of Classical and Religious Music. Once he finished schooling, he spent most of his time teaching piano lessons, composing, and playing for a church. This piece, Bercuse, was written by Foray in 1879. In its original version, it is for solo, violin, and piano. In response to his popularity, it was later arranged to a piano duet.
I'm wondering, I, I'm, I'm one song late in this, but I'm wondering if anybody recognized the popular music that was made from the song from Prince Igor, which they first played. What, what? It's from Kismet. What's the name of the pop song? Strange in Paradise. Strange in Paradise. I have a cookie as an award. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm uh, Sonny from Woodstock, and uh, when uh, I heard we were going to do this, I didn't know what to play, and Bob suggested this uh, song called P.L. Canela that I hadn't heard, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a Spanish uh, type of rhythm and type of song, and I real, it was really fun for me to uh, play something of a tradition that I, I didn't know well before, and I uh, wound up enjoying the song uh, immensely, so I'll let Bob tell you the details about it. Yeah, so this, um, I ran into this song. Uh, a woman sang it with our tango quartet at a uh, milonga that we played at Artistry. And uh, I had never heard it before, and it was quite unexpected. <laughs> uh, it turns out that Edie Gourmet sang it, and Linda Ronstadt sang it. And uh, they, they're both quite different, and, but Quite, it was, it's really quite a great song. And I also, it was running through my head when I was composing the themes for Gold Rush, Charlie Chaplin's Gold Rush, which I played at Lebanon Opera House recently. And uh, so I ended up using, adapting, <laughs> or being inspired by this song for the Charlie Chaplin theme for that movie. So. Um, so it was written by this guy named Bobby Capo, whose real name is Felix Manuel Bobby Rodriguez Capo. <laughs> and he's a Puerto Rican singer-songwriter. Singer he um, also was a television host, technical, and musical director. Uh, and he wrote, he was also a prolific songwriter. And this is probably his best known song. It's called Piel Canela which translates to cinnamon skin, which was a kind of also unexpected fact for me. Um, <coughs> he uh, moved to New York in the 40s, and um, he became the Puerto Rican consulate. Uh, he worked the ambassador of the Puerto Rican consulate uh, at the embassy located on Park Avenue. And then he uh, later worked for the Department of Labor's Division of Migration. So, um, Piel Canela. Which, by the way, is, this is quite different for what, from what we usually play. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sophie and I are playing an arrangement of Chopin's Fantasy and Funk II, which, again, you will probably recognize as a tune that was stolen in the early 1900s for a vaudeville show, later made popular by Judy Garland. Chopin was actually born um, in, oh, it's a cool town, I have to pronounce it, Zelazowa Vola in Poland, <laughs> but later moved to Warsaw. His, um, his father was French, therefore the name Chopin, and when he was 21, he moved to Paris and Francified the first part of his name to Frederick as well. He was recognized very early on as a child prodigy at piano. By eight, he was going around to all the rich houses in Warsaw playing what they called salon concerts. And even as, after he moved to Paris, he only gave about 30 performances in this salon setting. Um, he was always in very ill health. He spent a year or so, a very prolific composing period in Mallorca, but was so poorly, he complained about doctors saying, three doctors have visited me. The first said I was dead. The second said I was dying. And the third said I was about to die. He um, managed to live another 11 years back in Paris, but still died at the age of 39. Anybody recognize the pop song that was I'm Always Chasing Rainbows? That was written in 1917 and was in the Broadway show the next year, Judy Garland, two more films, and another Broadway show. Very popular in the 1940s. Let's see what's up there. So I bet this will surprise you. Paul McCartney and John Lennon uh, sang in church a lot when they were little growing up. And that Bach influence carried through to many of their songs. Oh Sacred Head Now Wounded, some of you may know, that was inspired to be Bridge Over Troubled Water, an American tune. Sometimes it's the melody, sometimes it's the chordal structure. 
Paul McCartney uh, wrote Blackbird, inspired by Bach's Bure in E minor. Paul and John sing, sing oh, this singing in Liverpool. Penny Lane, you can hear the piccolo trumpet playing lines from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto number no. two. The Beach Boys were inspired by Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring to write Lady Linda. Lady Gaga, Brad, Bad Romance is from Fugue in B minor. And Amy Grant, Sing Your Praise to the Lord, comes from Bach's Fugue in C minor. Pretty impressive, huh? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Kathleen Dolan from Barnard. Sherry and I are going to do two pieces by Kabaleski. Just a quick uh, little bit about Kabaleski. Dimitri Kabaleski was born about the same time as George Gershwin, but lived in Russia. He played piano by ear by the age of six, and by 18 entered the Moscow Conservatory, where he took lessons and also taught piano. He toured both Europe and the United States. He often used Russian folk songs in his compositions and enjoyed writing for children. We'll play two of those, the first called The Clown. Kabbaliski wrote to instruct his students. It's um, a takana is a uh, song in which the one hand plays legato very smoothly and the other detached staccato. And this is a short one called Takatina. My name is Jonathan Denham, uh, and I'm from the Heartland, Vermont, and uh, we're glad to be back with you this year, um, and Les will introduce himself in a moment. Um, our first piece we're going to be doing is by Gabrielle Foray, which uh, Gwen beat me to the introduction already, 
So uh, I'll just mention a couple things. Uh, this year is the 100th year of, uh, since his death. Uh, he died in 1924. And uh, in the 1880s, he composed a very beautiful requiem or funeral mass. And so we're going to be doing one of the movements from that uh, requiem, uh, the Sanctus movement. It's a really peaceful, gentle, beautiful, pensive mass. Um, and I would encourage you to, if you don't know it, take a, take a listen later. Uh, we'll approximate it as best we can. It's for orchestra, organ, and voices. Uh, so we'll see what we can do. But uh, please enjoy the Sanctus movement from Foray's Requiem, arranged by Darwin Wolford. I'm Lester Gibbs. Uh, I was born in Lebanon in 1940. Um, grew up in Hartford, joined the Army in 58, came back here in 95. And uh, when I came back here, I became the organist of the Congregational Church here in Woodstock for 18 years. And so John and I are sort of sharing uh, the same position several years apart. And it's been fun. And so uh, today, this particular piece is going to be Psalm 19. Um, and John will explain that as we go along. And we hope you enjoy. Yeah, so I want to ask, uh, what cool event is going to happen April 8th this year? The eclipse, the solar eclipse. Yes, I hope you all get a chance to see it. Um, 
So it reminds me of the title of this one, The Heavens Are Telling. This is Psalm 19 by Benedetto Marcello. He was a Venetian who lived uh, from 1686 to 1739 uh, in the Baroque period, uh, kind of like Vivaldi was a Venetian as well. Um, he was a statesman and a governor also at times in Venice. Um, and this piece comes from a setting of 50 psalms that he did uh, to music, and it was written for voice and unspecified instruments. So uh, we organists have co-opted it uh, quite quite a bit uh, for, and that's how it's often performed nowadays on the organ. Um, it's interesting, the piece does well in, in showing the text of the psalm, just uh, it must be a style thing where, where you'll have a phrase and then it repeats again in this music that we're about to play. And that's similar to some of the Near Eastern poetry in the Psalms, where they have a phrase and then the next phrase reflects on or is, is helped by that other phrase. So um, we aren't singing today. Um, but uh, the, some of the lyrics are, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. So I hope you'll enjoy this uh, rendition by Lonnie Smith of Benedetto Marcello's Psalm 19. <laughs> 